Released on January the 20th, 2023, the Rolling Stones in mono box set is back. And this time, it looks as good as it sounds. This superb limited edition 16 album colored vinyl box set contains all of the studio recordings released by the Rolling Stones between 1963 and 1969. That's 186 tracks and 14 different colors. I'm Andrew from Parlogram and welcome to our review of the Rolling Stones in mono colored vinyl box set. Originally issued in September 2016, this set has been out of print for a long time. And if you're looking to find one today, you'll have to be prepared to fork out at least $750 for one on Discogs. Unlike Apple with the Beatles mono box, Abco have taken the very intelligent decision not only to repress this set, but improve it by pressing it on colored vinyl. But before we go any further, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the good folks at Abco for sending me this set early so I can review it for you. In the 1960s, pop music was all about mono, and it was the format that suited the Rolling Stones music perfectly. Raw and honest, with no frills, it had an energy and an edge the stereo mixes just couldn't match. Mono was the format their heroes Chuck Berry and Muddy Waters had recorded in, and the sound of those records became the inspiration for their own. And such was the domination and importance of mono at that time, Decca never even released, let alone recorded, their first two albums in stereo. Achieving that perfect mono sound and tone on the record was key for the Stones, and could only be achieved by them playing live in the studio together. And it was those mono mixes which the Stones considered to be the definitive versions of their 60s songs. And even though Satanic Majesties sold more copies in stereo, it's the mono version which is considered to be the superior mix. Beggar's Banquet and Let It Bleed weren't released in mono in the US, but this set gives you the chance to hear them both in that format without embarking on the near impossible task of finding pristine original UK pressings. And despite being stereo to mono fold downs, they lose nothing of their power or quality in this set. However, Beggar's Banquet's opening track, Sympathy for the Devil, is a true mono mix and worth the price of admission alone. Mono may only be, by definition, a single channel format, but a well done mono mix, such as the ones the Decca engineers did on these albums, produces an almost 3D like quality with a depth and texture which is impossible to recreate in stereo. In fact, if you've ever listened to these or indeed many other 60s group stereo albums, you'll know that mono is the best way to hear them. I'll talk about sound quality a little later on in this video, but now it's time to show you exactly what's inside this box. The first difference between this and the black vinyl set is this iridescent sticker, which tells you that this is the Rolling Stones in color. As with the 2016 set, this is a limited edition of 10,000 copies, of which this particular set is number 8,525. Okay, let's get it open and take a look inside. There's another sticker on the shrink which states that it was made in the Czech Republic, indicating that this was pressed by GZ or GZ Vinyl, who also pressed the 2016 issue. On the back of the box, there's a glossy information panel which tells you exactly what's in the box, all of which you're about to see. So first up in the box is a booklet a glossy cover, soft back booklet, 44 pages of great writing, fabulous pictures of the stones throughout the 1960s. A great item to look at while you're listening to the albums. 
It's good old Charlie and the Stones down the King's Road in the 60s. Look forward to reading that, but we're here for the vinyl, so let's get into that. First up out of the box naturally is their first UK album, self-titled album, The Rolling Stones. And all of the albums you'll see come in these resealable clear plastic wallets or folders, which I like to uh, I like to take off because um, sometimes the adhesive strip sticks to the covers. So I, I prefer having them out of those, but that's your choice. There we go. That's all the tracks on their first album. Um, no flip backs on these albums, not all the UK uh, editions of the Stones albums did have flip backs, some did, but it was very much luck of the draw. And as a rule, um, the, the company which produced these covers for Decca, Clouton Baker or Robert Stace, uh, didn't use flip backs. But these are really nice and shiny. They're of a good thickness and the reproduction is very good. But let's have a look at the vinyl. Well, first off, we can see they come in these, uh, not paper, but these are a thick card inners. I know some people like to see uh, polyline dinners, and that would have been maybe preferable, but like many collectors, I put my own on anyway. So it doesn't make too much of a difference at this point. This first album is this lovely blue color. And of course there's the red Decca label, all of the original UK labels, mono labels were red as well. Same color, different typeface and layout, but uh, that's the modern style. But a really nice color and a, and a good weight to this. I'll, um, I'll weigh them when I do the review, but uh, for now we'll just press on and have a look through the rest of the albums. So of course this set mixes the UK and the US albums. This is uh, Rolling Stones 12 by 5 from October 1964, not issued in the UK. Again, nice glossy sleeve. This is the picture that was used on the Stones second album in the UK. too much static on these which is good and not, not too difficult to remove from the sleeves this is a it doesn't come across maybe on the camera because of the white balance but this is a sort of gold colored vinyl um, maybe I can correct the white balance with a piece of card there there we go that's uh that's how it should look the camera's automatic white balance sort of changes it to a much paler color there we go that's 12 by 5 Next up is the Rolling Stones number two, the second UK album from January 1965. Really nice, shiny, heavy cover. This is a darker blue vinyl. And there's lots of, I uh, don't know if you can make those out, but there are these uh, inscriptions in the dead wax, which I can't really read on the phone, but they're just uh, matrix numbers. And this is a selection number as well as stamped matrices all around there. As I said, these were pressed by GZ Vinyl or GZ Vinyl in the Czech Republic, not too far away from here. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, of course, Rolling Stones Now from February 1965. Again, American only album. The back cover looking virtually the same 
as Rolling Stones number two, the one we just looked at before. Very nice covers. The original covers, the American covers were very thick, but obviously uh, not being laminated were prone to a lot of ring wear and seam splits. This is a, a darker gold vinyl here, which is changing color again due to the white balance of the camera. Maybe I can just fool it a bit. There we go. That's how it should look. Nice gold colored vinyl there. Next out of the box is uh, Out of Our Heads, another US only album, this time from July 1965. And the advantage of this box is of course that you won't get uh, covers this good on any original copy. This is a lovely blue, light blue vinyl. Lovely colors. Next up is the UK out of our heads uh, from September, 1965. Originals had this uh, green. Actually, the originals had a sort of more grayish tint. The the uh, green tint of this cover didn't really um, come till later into the reissues of the late 60s, early 70s. The originals were much, much grayer than this. Uh, but this is a, on a sort of olive green vinyl suits the cover. Again, let's just correct the white balance here. There we go. That's nice. And of course, to follow that is the American version of Out of Our Heads, December's Children and Everybody's. This is from December 1965. And there are the tracks. And this one is on a, like a silver vinyl, I think. That's sort of, it's sort of like got a metallic kind of finish to it. Not really a metallic finish, but there's some textures going on there, which suggest they were going for a silver finish. Next out of the box from 1966 is the UK version of Aftermath from April of that year. Again, a very hard album to find in decent shape. The original UK covers were very thin and uh, much thinner than Beatles covers at this point. Um, really cutting corners and they they just cut up really badly. And they're so difficult to find in good condition, which is one good thing about this set. At least you get a decent set of covers. This one's on a, a wonderful purple vinyl to match the tint of the cover. Next up from July 66, the American version of Aftermath with that uh, wonderful Gerard Mankiewicz shot on the front, which is also on their tour program of that year as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, this album had painted black on it, which the UK one didn't. And this one, they've gone for a gray vinyl. This one's not silver. There's nothing in there which suggests 
any metallic content. There we go. Going into 1967, January 1967, for the UK edition of Between the Buttons. Again, another fabulous Gerard Mankiewicz shot of them on the front, early in the morning, looking pretty hungover in Hyde Park. Charlie and his buttons. Just to compare, I've got a, an original UK copy here of Between the Buttons. This is a stereo copy actually, but it would have been the same as the mono, apart from the indicator at the top. And as you can see, that's a pretty good reproduction. The colors are maybe a little more saturated on the mono box set than on the original, but still the definition is, I'd say just as good. In the back is Charlie's drawing and on the original it's there too. But uh, as I said, on the original UK ones, very, they got grubby very quickly. So it's nice to have covers which are clean. This one is on a very pretty blue vinyl. February 1967 is another US album, Flowers. This was also available in the UK on import, or they actually they pressed them for export in the UK, and you could buy them in other countries in Europe. And they do turn up from time to time, especially in stereo, but in mono, they're very rare at this point. And this is on a really, really nice cerise pink vinyl. Very attractive. Now from this point onwards, the US and the UK synchronized and uh, all the albums became the same. This from December 67 is of course, their Satanic Majesty's Request. This has the uh, normal cover, not the lenticular cover which was on the originals, which I have, just happened to have one behind me. There we go. There it is, that's one of the originals. As you can see, I mean, it, the concept was good with this, with this lenticular cover, but time has not been kind to it because of the glue has bled through around the edges and it probably faded quite a lot actually. So the, the static picture works really well and this is a really good reproduction lots of great colors there and of course you've also got the gatefold which is glossy which wasn't on the original it was matte and i've seen a lot of copies where people have actually just um completed the maze with a pen or a pencil or something <laughs> anyway there it is nice it's very sturdy strong glossy cover and the color of the vinyl is white. There it is. One thing which this edition doesn't have, which is a bit of a shame, is um, the original inner sleeve. The original copies came with this smoke, red smoked inner sleeve. And it's uh, unfortunately not reproduced on this mono album. So mm, that would have been nice to see. Next up is uh, Beggar's Banquet. And this set reverts to its original concept design of uh, the lavatory wall design. Personally, I prefer the, the white the white cover which came out in the UK. Um, but this is what was originally intended and it does have the same gatefold image. Very strong, heavy cover that. It's 
a nice one. And the colour of this vinyl is a more sort of, I'd say, plum colour. Nice colour. Plum. Plum. Nice word, plum. And last but not least, from December 69, it's Let It Bleed. The last album to come out in mono in the UK, as indicated by this red dot here on the back. Blue for stereo, red for mono. And that was indicated by the inner sleeve, which they have reproduced on this album. There it is with all the information and the instruction, this record should be played loud. Naturally, to match the inner sleeve and the mono vibe, this is red, very crimson red vinyl. And Delia Smith's cake on the front. TV chef and author extraordinaire, Delia Smith. Finally, we come to Stray Cats. Again, nice shiny gatefold cover. Um, there they are, walking around London with Andrew Oldham. Maybe around Covent Garden with all that fruit and veg going on. Sometime in early 64. And this album rounds up EP tracks, single tracks that weren't on albums, such as Come On, the first single, The B-Side Stoned, EP tracks, Fortune Teller, Bye Bye Johnny, etc. Dandelion, B-Side of We Love You, and there's a single version of that on there too. So all the B-Sides and non-album versions, the single version of West Coast Promotion Man, and single versions of Street Fighting Man, and Get What You Want. So that's a nice roundup of all the singles. Bit of a negative here on this copy has a, a rear upper seam split, which is disappointing. Being a collector, hate to see those seam splits. They are the bane of a collector's life. On white vinyl, whenever I buy a record online, I always tell people to take the record out of the cover when you ship it just for that reason. Second album on white vinyl too. Now I've seen um, recently some audiophile uh, labels are shipping their vinyl um, outside the covers, uh, which I think is a very sensible idea. And I'd like to see that uh, carried on through with uh, box sets too, because you pay a lot of money for these sets and uh, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth when you get an upper seam split, which is impossible to repair and you see all the time. It just stands out like a sore thumb. So um, that's a bit of a shame. The bottom ones are okay, um, but otherwise that's a very nice album and a very, very nice looking set. But what about the sound quality? Before we get into the sound quality, let's have a look at the quality of the vinyl itself. Now, the good news is that every single album in my set was 100% flat on the turntable, with no warping or dishing whatsoever. I also weighed every single one, and the average weight came out at exactly 180 grams. Of course, being colored vinyl, it's virtually impossible to see the playing surfaces clearly, but as far as I could tell, all of these discs were blemish free. Now, I know some of you like to clean new vinyl before you play it, but I didn't clean these, and I'm happy to report that all the albums played quietly and without crackle or surface noise. They were also free from clicks, pops, or other such distractions. I did, however, replace the card inner sleeves with these archival inners. Now, there's been a lot of talk recently in audiophile circles about the mastering chain of vintage pressings, but there's no smoke and mirrors here. All of the music in this set was sourced from the best available original analogue tapes, 
which were then transferred to DSD, or to give it its full name, Direct Stream Digital. Now, digital has become a bit of a dirty word when it comes to vinyl, but that shouldn't always be the case, especially with this set where everything sounds so good. You've only got to read the reviews of the 2016 set to back that up. Another reason why I think you should get this set is that after over 40 years of collecting 60s records, I know that the Rolling Stones albums are some of the toughest to find in decent shape, even more so than the Beatles. Their records always seem to take more of a bashing, which wasn't helped by the flimsiness of those original Decca covers, which got tired and worn out very quickly. The reproduction quality of these covers when compared to the originals is highly respectable, and credit is due for leaving off the barcodes. But saying that, I would have liked some polylined inners, and a printed one for Satanic Majesties would have been nice. Also, as Apple did with the Beatles mono albums when they first came out in 2014, I'd like to see these become available separately at some point. But what do you think? Do let me and everyone else know in the comments. This set truly rolls back the years to those great sounding UK first pressings and reflects all the incredible care and attention and sheer hard work the Abco team have put into this set. And unlike Apple, full respect to Abco for actually repressing it, and in my opinion, improving it. Now this is as good as these albums have ever and probably will ever sound, and it's a testament not only to the original Decca engineers, but also to its mastering engineer Bob Ludwig and Sean McGee's cutting skills that these albums sound as incredible as they do. So if you're fortunate enough to be able to afford it, this set is a no-brainer and is your best opportunity to score a mint-looking as well as perfect-sounding set of their 60s mono catalogue. So if you're sitting on the fence about getting this, I'd recommend getting off it sharpish and putting your order in before they're all gone. I've put a safe and secure link where you can do that in the description. You won't regret it. Feel free to share your thoughts and opinions about this set in the comments. Also, check out our other Stones videos on the channel. I'll be back next week with something completely different. So I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching.